The question over here is identify the technique shown in the image below. The options are inferior alveolar nerve block, extraoral inferior alveolar nerve block, Akasoni Vazirani technique, and Gauge technique. Okay, so this, if you can see what you are seeing in the image, I have enlarged the image for you. What you can see is that there is a needle. You have the uh, gross anatomical picture of your mandible, and this is the condyle of the mandible, and your a uh, needle, uh, the site of injection, the needle has been taken all the way up to the condyle and there is probably local anesthetic that is being deposited in the region of the condyle. Okay, so they are trying to ask which is the technique that is involved in nerve blocks that you use the condyle as a or rather even the neck of the mandible as your uh, important landmark for giving the anesthesia. So before we go into the answer, let's just have a look at the different types of giving a mandibular nerve block or an inferior alveolar nerve block. In the traditional or the conventional inferior alveolar nerve block, we all know for a fact that the local anesthetic is deposited in the region where the inferior alveolar nerve in enters the mandibular foramen. Okay. As a result, what you do is you take your needle and you pierce the buccinator mu muscle and go into the pterygomandibular space. Okay. By going into this space, what you do is you uh, deposit the local anesthetic solution lateral to the medial pterygoid muscle just at the entrance of the nerve into the mandibular foramen. What happens in such a situation is that is the reason why you uh, Feel the anterior border of the ramus of the mandible with your thumb so as to identify where is the deepest notch and in addition to that you hold the uh, anterior and the posterior borders of the mandible so as to get an idea of the width of the mandible. So your needle should be actually at the center of the uh, anterior border, posterior border and the height is determined by the deepest point on the anterior border of the ramus of the mandible. As a result of this, your local anesthetic solution gets deposited at the exact region where you want it within the pterygomandibular space. Another important question that was asked was which of the following muscles are pierced when giving a mandibular nerve, an inferior alveolar nerve block and the answer to that is your buccinator muscle. Okay. Now, then you have another technique which is called as the anterior technique. This technique is not very well followed. Why? Because it is very difficult to probably identify where the alveolar nerve block is going to be. So it's better to not go into the details of that. Now, in what about patients in which you cannot ask the patient to open the mouth wide? Because in, when you're giving a conventional inferior alveolar nerve block, you have to ask the patient to open the mouth wide so that you can penetrate or you can pierce the oral mucosa and you can go to your site of injection. Patients with trismus, patients who are going to be having uh, OSMF. In such situations, what happens is the patient cannot open their mouth wide. So what is going to happen is you have to probably give another nerve technique, nerve block technique, which will ensure that the entire anesthetic solution is deposited in the region that is necessary. So that is where the Vazirani Akisoni, Vaz, Vazirani Akisoni technique comes into picture. Over here, what happens is you ask the patient to bite. The patient is supposed to bite. They completely occlude. The occlusal line is the landmark for your penetration of your needle. So what you do is when the patient bites, you have an occlusal line. Along that line, just parallel to that line, you take your needle, you penetrate it inside and you know where you are supposed to deposit your solution. This is primarily indicated in patients with OSMF or Christmas. Now, there are situations where after giving the through the conventional technique also see because the, the greatest disadvantage of the conventional technique is that you have the inferior alveolar vessels along with the nerve. So there is a very high chance that you might cause a hematoma formation in that region. So in order to avoid that you can probably give the nerve block at a higher level where you have the nerve present primarily and you do not have the blood vessels. As a result, hematoma formation will be very less. And that is your Gauguage technique. In the Gauguage technique, what you do is, you take your needle and you penetrate it at a higher level than what the position of the nerve is. So if my nerve is going to enter the mandibular foramen 
here i will take my needle and i will penetrate it at a higher level just at the region where it is entering the mandible or where it's coming close to the mandible so in such a position there are the alveolar nerves uh, sorry the blood vessels aren't running parallel to the nerve and because of that it is going to be easier to achieve uh, the nerve block in a much more easier way and this technique is what is called as the gauge technique where you take your needle all the way up to the neck of the mandible or the condyle and you penetrate the and you uh, deposit the local anesthetic solution over there as a result you do not have hematoma formation so coming to the question over here i like i told you because it is at a higher level the answer is going to be gauge technique the ianb is your conventional ianb technique that they are talking about an extra oral ianb technique can be given in patients where you penetrate the needle either from below the ramus or rather below the body of the mandible or posterior to the auricle but usually this is not preferred very well in patients this can be used again in patients who have trismus or patients who are unconscious and then you have the vasironi akesoni vasironi technique which we had discussed is primarily in patients with trismus where you use the occlusal line as your landmark